Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today's video is going to be more laid back and just kind of a catch up on how some of my plants are doing. And you're also gonna see some updates of how I'm arranging the plants and just like the layout of my living space here. So I'm really excited to share that with you. And I'm honestly just really excited to film this video because my favorite videos are the casual ones. So yeah, I'm excited to just hang out and chat plants with you. It's really fun every time I set up to film in here too because I'm kind of discovering all of the different places I can sit and all the different backgrounds I can have. Oh, is my TV gonna be flickering though? Maybe I'll have to turn that off. Sometimes it does me dirty. Oh, <laughs> instead of turning it off, I turned it on. I think I really like this spot to sit and chat with you though. I moved my Ikea Calyx shelf to behind the couch and it's kind of become a bit of an alocasia zone. There's some philodendrons up there too. We'll take a better look at that, but I'm just loving seeing it behind me. It looks so nice. Before we get into too many of the updates, I wanna chat with you about today's sponsor. Thank you so much to Native for sponsoring today's video. Today, I am specifically going to be talking to you about Native's plastic-free deodorants, which are one of my all-time favorite products from Native. This is an OG staple for me, and I've been especially grateful for and appreciating them lately because it has been so smoking hot in here. So this has been an absolute necessity, honestly. I love how fresh Native's deodorants keep me feeling. They have odor protection for up to 72 hours. They are vegan and cruelty free, which is of course very important to me and also aluminum free, which was another thing that I was really looking for back when I was searching for a deodorant to use. And of course, Native's deodorants are available in this 100% plastic free packaging. So I really appreciate that there's a more sustainable and earth friendly option available. The plastic free versions use the exact same formula as their original deodorants that come in the classic packaging. By opting for Native's plastic free version of their packaging, you save 37 grams of single use plastic. These deodorants have kept me feeling so fresh throughout these hot days. They're not sticky and they feel dry while applying. So it's just overall 10 out of 10. Right now, my go-to scent for the summer is cucumber and mint, of course. If you wear this, it smells like you just came out of the shower all day and it's immaculate. And of course, I've still been loving my coconut and vanilla. It's such a warm and cozy, but also really soft scent. And the last one that I have here is the charcoal, which my boyfriend has been really enjoying using this one. This one also smells really fresh, but almost a little bit more like powdery or musky. I'm definitely feeling the cucumber mint vibes though for the summer. If you would like to try out Native for yourself, make sure to click the link down below in the description box and use my code WILDFERN12 for 20% off of your first purchase. This offer is available site-wide, but only for a limited time, so make sure you stock up and save while you can. Okay, so I thought I would start by giving you a kind of overview of how everything is looking in here. I know it's gonna be kind of hard to see from where I'm standing because it's backlit, but just to kind of give you an idea of the layout, right in front of me here, we have the dining area, which is where I was sitting. And then that's the calyx shelf that was behind me that used to be in the hallway, but I moved it over there and I think that it looks so much better. And it also serves as kind of a little bit of a divider between the dining space and the uh, like living room little area. The couch is just tucked behind it. I don't know, I just think it looks so cute. I love it. And I like that you're not just seeing like the back of the couch. I don't know, it, it was just kind of giving me weird vibes before the way it looked, but I'm so happy with how this is looking now. Um, and then in the dining area, I also got this new little plant shelf from Ikea and I love it so much. I have a lot of my smaller moss poles on there. So we'll take a closer look at that as well. Um, and what else is new in here? There's probably a lot that I have going on that's new and that I haven't shown yet. So I guess I'm just going to get started with walking around. Maybe I will start in the living room here. Also, I got a new fridge and it looks 10,000 times better than the old fridge. I'm so, so happy with it. Um, that's not a plant update, but the kitchen is looking a lot better now because of that fridge. It's like getting pulled out though. Does it have like brakes on the wheels or something? I don't know. Somebody please advise. 
There, that's better. I <laughs> had to tuck her back in. Okay, so this is the living room space. If you watch my Millsbo Wide video that I posted a couple of weeks ago, then you would have seen this space in more detail. I kind of went through like some of the styling and I went through all of the plants in the cabinet and gave updates. So if you're curious on that area in more depth, then I'll link that video in the description box. Um, but yeah, I'm super happy with how this setup is looking. I have been, of course, just playing with moving plants around and finding the right spots for everybody. Someone that I recently moved is my philodendron subhastatum. I moved it to just hang out down there. And I set up a plant spectrum 16 grow light from Mother um, to sit in front of it so that it's getting enough light because it is, you know, a ways away from the window and um, it's not close enough to the cabinet to benefit from the grow light in there. So I figured I would give it the royal treatment and set it up with its own little light. So I'm hoping it'll be happy with that. I really want to see this plant start to grow bigger for me. This is the newest leaf on the green one and it's actually quite large. And then there's of course the variegated one in there as well. Also, you may notice that all of my plants are decorated right now with my beneficial mites from Copper. I have got the Swirsky Alti Mite and the, I think these are called the Spickle. Let's see. Yeah, the Spickle Alti Mite. Those two come in a combo pack and they're good for different types of mites like spider mites. And um, they're also good for thrips, probably among other things, but those are the main things like spider mites and thrips that I want to either prevent or um, take care of because I do have some spider mites happening right now. So I really want to try out the beneficial mites. I actually haven't used them before. I've only used the green lace wings, which I also got from Copper. Um, but I thought I would just give the beneficial mites a go this time, especially since I'm specifically wanting to prevent and treat spider mites in my collection at the minute. So I can update y'all with how that's going. But yeah, I have one of each of them on 25 of my plants. And I know these mites are only supposed to be used in 60% or more humidity. So a lot of people can't use them just out in their home, but I have over 60% humidity right now. So I'm just hoping it's going to be fine, like out in the open here. I've seen other people where I live use them like outside of a cabinet, just on their plants like this. So. So hopefully I have luck and this just goes well for me. But yeah, I, I literally just put them on not long ago. So I don't, I can't say my thoughts yet. Um, but just to kind of explain, cause you'll probably see those on a lot of my plants. I also moved this subhastatum into that cute little arch pot down there. I love that so much. You're actually gonna see a lot of new pots in my collection today. Okay, next over here, we have my Peperomia Hope, which I'm absolutely in love with. This is now one of my like all time favorite plants. I've just, I don't know, I've just become obsessed. I love the way it looks. First of all, I love the way it looks as a whole, just the way it like cascades down. It's so pretty, but I also just love each individual leaf. Like I love how succulent it is. It's so gorgeous. And the stems actually go pink if you give it high light. This isn't getting a ton of light right now. It doesn't seem to mind though, honestly. It's still growing a lot, but it would appreciate more light. I had it on the windowsill for a while and it was a loving life, but I just love the way it looks here. So I don't know. I'll probably end up moving it around, but I'm just in love with seeing it here. So she's just gonna stay there for a little bit. We also have a new leaf coming in on my Calathea Warshawixii. Um, Y'all know how much I love this plant. And if you're new here, welcome, hello. Um, this is one of my favorite plants. It's the only Calathea in my collection. And um, I've been trying to kind of crack the code on this and figure out how to grow it successfully because it can be quite tricky. And just recently, within the past little while, it's been growing well for me and um, giving me decent sized leaves. Oh my God, I can literally see spider mites on it. Oh, I hope these mites are putting in the work trying to take care of those. Oh my goodness, I just rinsed it the other day too. I thought I rinsed all the mites off and it's just like, oh, the poor thing. Calathea and spider mites, y'all. Anyways, she's beautiful, still growing, and I'm hoping that these beneficials are going to give her a little boost. My beautiful Thai constellation and SP Silver just hanging out here. 
not much action going on at the minute, but they're looking gorgeous as always. I actually do have a really cool update for my Anthurium politiflorum. It is actually blooming for me, you guys, and I'm gonna try to harvest pollen for the very first time from an Anthurium. So I'm just really curious to find out how that's going to go. My friend Natasha sent me a bunch of information on it and I'm gonna try to do it. <laughs> So there's two inflows on it right now. There's that one over there, which is a little bit came after a little bit after. And this was the first one that came out. So this has already gone through the female stage. And I think that the pollen is starting to come in. If you can see all those little dots, I honestly am not very well informed on this process, but I'm just learning as I go. Um, this one is just like exiting the female stage, I think. I don't really know the technical terms, but yeah, these have been out for a few weeks now and I've been keeping a very close eye on them and making sure that this plant stays well watered and well fertilized and everything. And it also, while this was happening, so it's, it put out two inflows and a leaf all at the same time. I couldn't even believe it. So I think that this plant has been really happy lately. This is the new leaf and look, oh my goodness, it's still hardening off but this is definitely going to be the biggest one. Like you can see how floppy it is. It's still very soft and it's expanding. Oh my goodness. Like I can't with this Anthurium, you guys. It is literally so, so gorgeous. Oh man. I did have it hanging in the window here and then I had to move the hanging pot it was in. So now I just have it there. I don't know if it's gonna stay there or not. Um, I kind of like having it hanging because then it's displayed a little bit better, but it's just hanging out on that shelf for now. Anyways, wish me luck on my pollen collection journey because I am a noob. Down here we have my lovely Monstera Escaletto. Now this plant has been transitioning to living outside of the cabinet and I don't think he's been loving that transition. This was the leaf it put out after I take it out, took it out and as you can see it's a lot smaller than the last leaf so Hopefully the next one will be bigger, but yeah, I mean, I'm not super surprised. It is quite a different environment when you take plants out of the cabinet to just regular room conditions. So we'll see what the next leaf looks like. It is rooting like crazy into my Rousseau pole here. So that's really nice to see. There's this big root that came out first and then a bunch of other roots are all coming in. It's really satisfying to see them. Probably need to water this plant today too. I am watering like crazy, you guys. Like, oh my gosh, it's it's taking a lot of my time just keeping up with watering lately. In the cabinet, I don't think there's too much to really update since my video on this cabinet, except for I moved my Anthurium Dark Mother Magnificum Hybrid into the cabinet just because I had the room, because I, I took out my Ring of Fire. I moved my Philodendron Ring of Fire out to the, um, the balcony outside so i decided to pop this guy in because i saw that it was coming out with a new leaf that you can see down there and i was like you know what maybe i'll just give him this nice little bougie environment while he's doing that because i'm really starting to love this plant like it's so cool that i grew this from a seed too um anyways i do have him clipped to the shelf because this petiole is just crazy and that's something that i struggle with with Anthurium is I find that the petioles can just get so long and like wavy and just crazy. And I'm like, how do people tame these? Like, what is the procedure? I don't know. If you have a method for that, leave a comment down below. Nothing else really happening in the cabinet since I made that video. Oh, except I did um, put my medium medium on a moss pole finally. So this pole back here is for my medium medium and it does have a new leaf. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to get in here. I'm like trying to squeeze in. It has a new leaf right there. So I'm really hoping that she does well with the, um, the repot and the pole and everything. I'll give you all a better update on that plant one day when I can take her out. Um, but today is not that day. She's too far in the back. I actually would like to just take it out of the cabinet soon anyways. I'd like it to live just out in the living room. Okay, and then moving closer to the window here, we recently got this little table just from a thrift store and it's just kind of chilling there because we don't have a coffee table here yet. So it's kind of nice to just have this little side table. I don't know, It. I mean, I was gonna say, I don't know if it'll stay, but it probably will not stay because once we get a coffee table there, it won't, it'll be too crowded. 
So I'll have to move that somewhere else, but I actually kind of like it here right now. I hated that at first. I was like, get that out of here. But now I kind of like it. Like, it's kind of nice having this extra little table for plants by the window. So yeah, anyways, the plants on here. The first one, my El Choco Red is looking absolutely deranged. Look at that, oh my goodness. I could not figure out for the life of me why it was looking so, so crazy. And then I realized it was because I had this plant turned around so the light was behind it and it was reaching towards the light of the window. So I just turned it to face the window this morning so hopefully it will go back normal soon. But I was so confused because it just suddenly did that and it wasn't thirsty. I mean, it had spider mites, but I'd never seen a plant do this because of spider mites before, so I didn't think that was it. And I was just like, okay, it's croaking on me again. Like, it's just gonna croak on me, I guess. Um, and then I realized that it was trying to go towards the light, so hopefully it will embrace going towards the window soon. But yeah, very, very strange. Um, and then beside that, we have my philodendron narrow, just looking beautiful here. As always, this is a new leaf on him gorgeous and these are a couple of new pots that i recently ordered from solarium i think that's how you say that she has a youtube channel and planty instagram and um she recently started making the this beautiful pottery um, and she's located in canada so I ordered from her and my pieces came in a couple of days ago so I haven't had a chance to pot anything in them yet but I'm just I'm so obsessed with them and I'm so excited to just have some really nice pieces in my collection when it comes to plant pots um, so I can link her down below if you're interested it's always nice to find Canadian pottery makers because um, it's so expensive to ship from the US so I was very happy <laughs> about that. Over here on the windowsill, my Hoya Latifolia Snow Queen has been growing. We have a couple new leaves that are coming in right now. Um, just little leaves. I'm waiting for it to really take off and give me a big one, but it seems happy so far. Another new leaf coming in on my oblique one there. Hoya Multiflora still blooming like crazy. Also, I put my silver or my um, string of hearts silver glory up there in that little woven hanging planter. It looks really cute and it's going to get good light there and everything. So I'm really happy that I found a home or at least a temporary home for that one. My Hoya Compacta has been growing like insane lately on multiple of the vines. It's just been putting out new leaves like crazy. Like y'all would not believe just how fast this Hoya is growing for me. It has been blowing my mind. Um, I wonder if it'll bloom for me this summer. That would be really nice. But yeah, I have like multiple new arms or vines on this. So that's really cool. I literally love this plant. Really need to repot my ficus, Shiveriana Moonshine, but isn't she looking gorgeous? Look at that variegation, those colors. Oh, she is stunning. Really need to repot her though, because she's still in her little plastic nursery pot that she came in and she dries out like crazy. Baby Monstera Obliqua that I meant to send to my friend Dakota for a plant trade, and I was standing in line at the post office and realized I didn't put it in, so... Sorry, Dakota, I was growing this baby for you and then I just totally forgot to put it in, but look how cute it is. Anyways, he already got one through a trade from another one of my plant friends, so it's all good. But um, yeah, I just have a whole bunch of uh, baby monster obliquo right now. These are some of my baby corms. I have Maharani and um, this, it's kind of looking a little bit sad. This leaf got, um, it was pushing up against the lid when I had a lid on this and it was getting too wet and just kind of melting off. So that's why it looks like this. But this is an Alocasia Zebrina reticulata. Um, this was a corm that was gifted to me by a friend. And I'm so excited to have this growing. I cannot wait to see a new leaf on it. Um, this is such a cool plant, has such an amazing pattern on it. So really curious of how that's gonna grow for me. And this is the singular corm I have of this plant. So. I'm very protective of it and checking on it all the time. I, I think I want to wait until it gives me one more leaf before I transfer it out of here. Mandula pothos cuttings that I'm rooting for myself because I want to try growing one on a moss pole because everyone's doing that lately and apparently I'm a trend follower. So yeah, 
This one actually doesn't look like it's doing too hot. I had a couple that were rooting. One of them started rooting, but I sent it off for a trade. So this one I'm just hoping will eventually root. It was rooting in sphagnum, but it wasn't doing much, so I moved it to water. My singular stock of Raven's Easy, which doesn't ever grow for me. And my Hoya Yetii, which is really happy over here. Look at the new growth. Wow. He's loving his new life here because he was just tucked into a dark, a dark window that was facing a concrete wall in my apartment. And now in the house, he has this beautiful south facing window. He gets east light. You can see the sun's kind of coming um, from this direction right now. So he's not getting sun right now, but in the morning he gets beautiful light. The couch, which is unrelated to plant updates, but I'm loving these new pillowcases that I got from Ikea. Like the colors are so perfect. And then yeah, look how cozy this is with the calyx shelf behind the couch. Like it's just perfect. I love having the plants there behind. And we got this adorable little like mushroom lamp. How cute is that? Oh, the vibes are vibing. I am giving such a thorough update this time. This video is going to be so long, but I know that y'all won't mind. Oh, and I'm realizing I forgot things that I wanted to show you. There's just so much to show. I'm gonna grab my Anthurium viterifolium down from here because it's given me a new leaf and it's probably the nicest leaf it's given me. Um, where is it? Right there. It has a couple small marks you can see, but other than that, it's like pretty perfect looking. And I'm very, very proud of that. Sorry, I can't hold it out very far. My arm's not there. I'll back the camera up. Can you see? Lighting is probably awful. Oh, why don't I just put it down? Oh, shoot. Don't get caught on that. Yeah, this is a new leaf. It's still slightly hardening off, but it's like almost completely hardened off. Look at how nice this is. This is probably the nicest viterifolium leaf I've ever grown. I'm so proud of that. I find that it's such a beautiful green. It's like a medium to dark toned green, I would say, but man, it's so pretty. And it does have a sheen to it as well. Like people always say Politiflorum is the velvety shiny one and it is more shiny and velvety than this, but this does still have like a velvet sheen to it. Really, really pretty. Oh, I'm so happy with this, honestly. I've got the mites in there for this one as well. Can't be too cautious these days, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna put her back. Oh my goodness, we have another one of the plants in there. There's like a few different propagations potted in here. And I just saw that that one is starting to put out a new leaf. Oh, how exciting. I'm so excited about that. Okay, let's move over to the calyx. So this is what it looks like. Oh, first of all, I have to show you this painting because I am utterly obsessed with this. Oh my goodness. One of my patrons sent this to me and I'm literally in love. It's a gardening ghost, you guys. Like, could that be more me? I honestly don't think so. It's so, so perfect. Oh my goodness. Every time I look at it, it just makes me so happy. And she picked out the perfect like vintage frame for it too. It's just so stinking cute. Gifts like this genuinely mean so much to me, like handmade things that feel just so me, you know? I just really, really appreciate stuff like that. It's so, so sweet. So thank you again, Taylor, for that. It makes me so happy. And look at how cute it looks on this little shelf too. Okay, so right next to the adorable painting, we have my Hoya Matilde, who's looking amazing these days. Like, I don't think she's ever looked better than how she looks right now just gorgeous. Um, she's not getting a ton of light here, honestly. It's just kind of ambient light back here on this end of the shelf, but she's still growing a ton. Like there's growth on like almost all of the vines, honestly, tons of new leaves coming in. And she has this really dark, deep green again, because she's not getting scorched by a grow light. Hoya Matilde will be a light green if you're giving it highlight and if you're giving it lower light it will be dark green and it will give you these big leaves which i prefer um yeah it's just mm, i love her so much and she's in this new cover pot from ikea which is just like kind of a light gray or off white and it just looks so good with her so yeah i am loving that and seeing her cascade down the side of the shelf it just looks so great 
So I've really been enjoying that. Of course, we have the Shepardi eye beside her, who, oh my goodness, I was gonna say isn't doing anything, but I just noticed that little baby leaf there. That's very cute. Looks like growth is coming from there too. So maybe it is doing something. Oh, it was blooming too, actually. I wonder if those are still on. Oh, they are. Just two tiny flowers came out, you guys. They're so cute. Look at those. Two singular flowers, how sweet. I love the like fuzzy white blooms on this plant. So, so cute. And then Philodendron tortum hanging out. Looks like it's actually preparing to put a new leaf out. You can kind of tell like the caterpillar gets a different look. If you know, you know. And then we have my Philodendron viricosum, which of course is wearing her mites. I was immediately like, get these on this girl. Um, because I just, I want this plant to do well. I need to extend the pole ASAP. I have so many pole extension videos to do, or videos, pole extension, like plants, plants to extend their poles, but I think I might do them in a video and just have like a big pole extending party. Um, I might do that. I don't know if that's boring or not, but it needs to be done. Dragon scale is back here. Maharani hanging out back there, looking gorgeous. Alocasia Jacqueline is actually putting out a new leaf there and I cannot wait to see it. Look at that. Like that is going to be nice. That is going to be nice. Actually, it might not be that big, but it's still going to be nice. <laughs> my Cupria just hanging out. This is the newest leaf. Y'all saw it in my favorites video and now it's all just kind of like hardened off and settled in and it still looks absolutely amazing. Some plants down here that I don't think I really have any crazy updates for yet. Um, Quinquinervia is doing well after the re- Oh, this new leaf looks crazy. Very interesting. Okay, well, other than that weird leaf, it is doing well. It's putting out multiple new leaves um, since we repotted it in a video. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I love the Quinquinervia. Beside that is my Thompsonii, which is a relatively new Hoya to my collection and it's starting to take off which is so fun i gave it this snake trellis these are the new fuzzy leaves coming in they're so cute i wanted this hoya because it's a hairy fuzzy one and you know me with fuzzy plants love them so i'm really glad that that's growing it looks so cute Hoya Kaimuki has put out this crazy vine it looks like it's wanting to put leaves out but they're not actually like turning into full leaves yet so hopefully they will in this bowl we have my begonia botanicas one i just have saran wrap on the top because i actually went on etsy to order a custom acrylic lid for this and with shipping to me it was going to be like 50 dollars so i didn't end up ordering it because that just that's just a lot for like a piece of acrylic to go on here but low key, I still want to order it. <laughs> I might order it one day. I don't know. I know that's like crazy, but it would just look so nice to have a clean, um, a clean lid on this. But for now, we just have this plastic wrap. I think I might actually show you it. It's kind of a pain in the butt when I take it off, but that's okay. I'll just redo it after because it's worth it to see her. Oh, look at her. She's so gorgeous. You can see that there's a new leaf coming in there. She's living her best humid life inside that terrarium and she gets really good light as well. Wow, this is definitely the best this plant has ever looked for me. That one leaf got a little bit janky from the move, but these two are looking so good. Can't wait to see that new leaf come in, see how big it's gonna get. Um, yeah, We're looking really, really good. I'm really into begonia at the minute, so I've been obsessed with this. These are my new pinguicula that I recently featured in a video where I unboxed them and got them set up in here and everything. They're settling in so well. Like, they've already grown a ton, honestly, or like the leaves have all opened up. Yeah, they're looking really, really good. So I'm super happy about that. And then my 
regular one, regular one, <laughs> the one that I had previously that isn't new, my Morinensis. This one is doing really well also and getting nice and pink for the summer. Oh, my variegated Thanksgiving cactus is growing like a weed. Almost all of its little um, pads or like chain links are putting out new, new growth, which is so cool. Like there's literally new, new growth everywhere on this plant and I'm obsessed. New little one branching out from there. Same with on here. This was, these were two different cuttings that I traded for. Um, this plant was from a trade and then these two were from a separate trade with someone else. So they're from different plants. Um, and the variegation is so good on all of these. I got so lucky with this plant. The heck, it looks like that's like a little bloom there. I don't know what that is. But yeah, anyways, it's doing really well and growing a ton. My Syningia is doing really well, surprisingly. I honestly thought that um, this might croak after I got it. It just like dropped all its blooms and I was like, uh-oh. But no, it's still hanging in there. It's still just looking cool and fuzzy. I haven't really done anything with this plant because I'm scared of it. So it's just hanging out here in the window and it seems happy with that. Also another just general update for my collection. I recently fertilized pretty much every single plant with Osmocote slow release fertilizer because like I was saying, it's just been so hard to keep up with watering for the summertime that doing that is gonna save me a lot of time, just not having to mix up my liquid fertilizer. That way I can just like do mass waterings in the shower and it just makes things a lot easier for me. So the other day I just took all of my plants and put Osmocote in them. So most of them do have slow release fertilizer now. Um, just saying, just to let you know for anyone who cares. <laughs> Philodendron Splendid, doing amazing as always. This is a new leaf that it's just unfurled. Look at that. Oh my goodness, I love this plant. And you can see the Linearis is touching it as well. The Linearis sits, sits up there at the higher window and it kind of cascades down and it just looks so pretty and it genuinely makes me so, so happy. Let me back up. I love that there's the stacked, oh my goodness, it's so backlit, I'm sorry. I love that there's the stacked windows here. Maybe if I go from the side, oh, it doesn't really help. But anyways, I just wanted to say that I have the Linearis up there. I have a couple, I have a Ripsalis and then a Hoya on the other side, but I really want to put more plants up there because I don't know, it's just like an extra <laughs> windowsill that I can utilize. And I just adore the way that the Linearis is cascading down here. I know it's hard to see, but trust me, it looks immaculate up there. Okay, and then we have come to my new, this is just a random tray, my new cluttered plant shelf. I recently moved this lamp to in front of it just so that I can get an extra boost of light, but I'm just going to move that out of the way so that I can show you, so that I can show you what this um, shelf is looking like. So this is technically, I think it's supposed to be like a console table, like, I don't know, for TVs or something from Ikea. I will link it down below. I forget what it's called right now, but I think it is so cute. I love the round edges. I love the color of the wood. It also comes in a darker wood as well. And it's just perfect for plants. Mine's obviously a bit of a mess right now. I need to kind of style it the way that I want it to be, but I'm in love with it. I'm so glad that I got it. Uh, they, it said it was out of stock at Ikea when I went, but then I went there and I just checked and there was two left and I was so happy. So yeah, I brought it home and here we are. It's kind of the perfect height to put some of my plants that aren't, that are on moss poles, but they aren't too tall. Um, it's kind of nice to group them together. This Serpens is so unwell. I really need to just like, I don't know. I think it's rotted, honestly. I need to look into that but we have some of my other healthier moss pole plants over here. In the front, we have my gigas, which I recently took out of the cabinet. So I'm gonna see how it does living in room humidity. I think it's gonna do just fine. This is a new leaf, as you can see. It's so gorgeous. I love this philodendron. We have a new leaf on my glorious. I don't know why they keep coming out wonky. I have no idea, but I do have the mites on it now, the beneficial mites. So if it is pest mighty, spider mighty related, hopefully it'll take care of that. 
but that is a new leaf on that one. We have my Brandy, which really needs to be extended. My Burl Marks Fantasy, this is what the new leaf ended up looking like, and I am in love with it. Oh my goodness. This plant is just, wow. It's climbing up to be one of my favorites for sure. And then, you guys, we have the queen here, my monster, Aurea. Can you believe how stunning this looks? Because I am genuinely shook, and I don't know what is going on, but for some reason, luck is suddenly on my side and the leaves aren't crisping anymore. I was having so many problems with crisping. I actually removed two of the leaves because they were so damaged from crisping. This was the original leaf that the cutting, it came as a cutting with this one leaf. Um, and these are the two newest leaves, as you can see. This is the like newest, newest one. Oh my God. I'm so paranoid now, like any like difference in shade that I see, like do you see that mark there? I'm literally scared that's gonna end up being browning. <sighs> I don't know, but um, yeah, usually the leaves would start browning like pretty soon after hardening off. And that's just a pattern that was happening. But as you can see, this one has been hardened off for a while. This one is hardened off now as well. It's actually gonna start pushing a new leaf soon and I don't have any browning. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but like, thank God, because this will honestly probably be my favorite plant in my collection if it stops browning. Like, look how pretty it is. Are you kidding me? Absolute perfection. I'm in love with it. So keep your fingers crossed for me. I did order the silica, uh, like the silica fertilizer supplement thing because apparently when you supplement your plants with silica, it strengthens the cell wall and it can help to prevent things like browning. This is kind of a controversial thing. Some people think it works, some people think it doesn't. So anyways, I ordered some because I was just gonna give it a go. And then the product arrived to me and it had an expiry date of December 31st of this year. And I was like, okay, I feel like they sent me old product because this expires in six months and that's just kind of ridiculous for a fertilizer. Like this big bottle, I would have barely even dipped into it by the time it expired. So I was like, no thank you. And I returned it, but then somebody messaged me on Instagram and they were like, oh, silica doesn't actually expire. So I don't know, maybe I should have kept it, I guess. And somebody else messaged me and said that diatomaceous earth has silica in it, which it does. And you can also put that in your plant and it will help to prevent the browning as well. So maybe I'll do that because I have diatomaceous earth. So yeah, that's kind of my little updates on the browning on the Aurea or the lack of browning right now, I guess. Anyways, I just, I'm really enjoying her while she's looking like this. And then down here, I obviously haven't done anything on the lower level really. It's just kind of storing random things. And one of those things is my philodendron painted lady, which I recently chopped. This is like literally just a cutting. Um, I need to pop this up. It looks like these are like drying out too. Um, I'm gonna leave this out so I can address this tonight. But yeah, this is my philodendron painted lady. I had mentioned previously that I planned to propagate her because the main plant had just become so unmanageable. The like main part of the plant is living out is outside on the balcony right now. Um, but I used these propagation ball things for the first time actually on this plant and I was so happy with them. Like they worked so well and it's so cool to see the roots and um, just, yeah, looks a lot nicer than the plastic wrap I was using. I mean, plastic wrap works, but this worked really well. The only thing that kind of sucked about these is that um, they're heavy, definitely heavier than just using plastic wrap. So it was kind of like leaning the vine down a little bit, but I was gonna chop it anyways, so whatever. But yeah, this is the cutting that I ended up with. I need to pot this up, two cuttings actually. I, I rooted two nodes so that I could have two separate cuttings to work with. And that's what they look like, beautiful. That's a new leaf on this one. I definitely need to water in here though. I can tell that it's getting dry. I do have a lot of plants living outside as you can see and I don't think I'm gonna be doing an update. Oh, maybe just one update actually. <laughs> I have to go out there for a sec to show you something. Okay, so the thing that I wanted to show you because it's time sensitive is my Hoya chicken farm is currently in bloom for the second time, which is so cool. This bloomed once, um, not even long ago, like six weeks ago it bloomed for me and then those blooms died off and then it's bloomed again from the same peduncle and that's the first time that's ever happened to me where a hoya has bloomed literally back to back from the same peduncle 
So I thought that that was really cool. That's what they look like. They're red and yellow and white. Very cute. We do have some things going on out here like new leaves, but I have a whole video planned for um, showing you the plants I have out here and doing like a little tour. So I'm gonna save the updates for that video, but they're all doing pretty well actually, which is really nice. Okay, and then right beside the balcony door, we have my philodendron majestic, who, as you can see, is putting out a beautiful new leaf. How gorgeous is that? Oh, I just love the red backs when these are unfurling. It is so, so gorgeous. So yeah, I can't wait to see this leaf. I don't want to bother it too much. It's always tempting. Oh, look at inside. So beautiful. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm obsessed. You already know that. I'm obsessed. Um, yeah, this is what the new leaf ended up looking like on this one too. And another new leaf that's hardening off here. And I actually added in a third vine like months ago and it wasn't doing anything. So I was like, okay, maybe it's just a dud, like it's not gonna grow. But I just noticed that it's starting to put out a leaf. So I'm gonna have another vine starting from way down here, which is kind of nice because it'll fill in some of these, well, hopefully, hopefully it'll fill in some of these gaps that we have. Oh, it's just gonna look so good. I need to extend this ASAP. Like I said, I have so many plants that I need to extend. I'm just saving it for when I have time to just like do a mass extension afternoon or something. Monstera adansonii looking stunning. This is honestly one of my favorite plants. I love it so much. It actually had a bit of a tough time. It was yellowing a lot of leaves because I was underwatering it when it was adapting to the new space, but now I think it's happy again. So yeah, looking gorgeous up there. Same with my polyneura. I feel like I never show this, but it's actually doing really well. Look at her, gorgeous. Like looking lush as heck. Wow, so, so beautiful. She just hangs out up there. And then I do have some really fun updates for the cabinet, but I'm gonna save that for the Mills Boat haul video that I'm going to be putting out. So keep your eye out for that to see what's going on in this cabinet because yeah, the plants in here are just looking amazing and I've been so happy with it lately. My string of hearts has been doing so well, like so much new growth. It was not getting a lot of light or warmth or anything. It was just kind of in a crappy spot in my, in my apartment. So now that we're here, it's like putting out new, new go growth from everywhere, which is really, really nice to see. So that's doing really well. And my Syngonium Albo, I recently propagated and then potted up all of these cuttings together. It's like a nice little bush again now. Um, some of the cuttings aren't really making it, but most of them are, so that's really cool. And here are my new plant shelves. You'll have to stay tuned. I'll probably film a video setting them up. So yeah, I kind of went, kind of went all out, honestly. <laughs> There's three different shelves here that are gonna be set up in this hallway. So let me know if you're interested in seeing a shelf setup video um, and I will get to work on that. If you tell me you wanna see it, it'll motivate me to do it faster. So please comment down below. <laughs> or else those boxes are gonna be sitting there forever. Okay, I think that's it. I'm just gonna cover the main space today because the, the office is a hot mess and there's really not much happening in the bedroom. Actually, I do have one update with the Gloriosum, just a sec. Okay, I just wanted to show you the new leaf that is coming in on my Gloriosum right there. Um, that came out of like, you know, the new growth point that comes out at the end. But then one of the other um, growth points or something, I guess, activated under there and I'm getting a second new leaf there. So I thought that that was really cool. And I was talking a lot about this plant in my making, a, making this house a home um, video where I did some just kind of like uh, things in my space. I was talking about this plant, how I want to propagate it. And people were telling me to cut between all of the nodes because these will just root, they're already rooted in, but they'll root more and become their own little plant and then you can separate them from this pot. And I think that that's what I'm gonna do. So it's really cool to see another new leaf coming in there because pretty soon I'm probably just gonna take an X-Acto knife and go and chop between all of these nodes and we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I was really excited to see not only a new leaf, but a second new leaf. All right, I think that is going to be it for this quite thorough plant update video. 
I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of the plants and I hope that you enjoy just the little tidbits of how the space is coming together. I get so excited to show you guys everything. I would love to hear your thoughts on anything down below in the comments. And don't forget if you're interested in checking out Native, there will be a link down below in the description box and you can use the code WILDFERN12 for 20% off of your first order. Thank you again to Native for sponsoring this video. All right, that is it. I hope that y'all are well. I hope that you are having a wonderful summer so far. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye.